Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to the final part of the Azure Stack series. We are in the final three episodes. Um, it's not been as long a series as I normally have because the exam topic series is quite long. Uh, and I've got a new series launching uh, next week, so look forward to that. I'm not going to quite tell you what that is quite yet, so I'll, I'll announce that later on this week. Um, but yeah, we're on the final topic today, and, and it's one of my favourite topics. It's, it's the reason why I started looking at Azure Stack, if I'm honest with you, Azure Stack HCI specifically. Um, and that's because we're going to talk about the integration with ABD. So I've got a bit of a special way to finish the, the series. Um, so this, this episode is going to have the final demo. But then in the final two episodes, uh, I did so I did a podcast, I recorded a podcast with somebody, a special guest, um, who is a specialist around Azure Stack and, and the whole family of Azure Stack. Uh, so it's a two-part podcast, so I'll be, I'll be showing at the end of each theory, in the next two episodes, I'll be showing uh, one part of, of uh, so it'll be two-part uh, kind of uh, podcast interview. So really, really good, really, really interesting. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So this is part one of the Integrate AVD and Azure Stack HCI topic. So this isn't as big a topic as the other ones, um, but it's still obviously a very, very interesting uh, topic and one that's close to my heart. And obviously, as you've seen in the demos, I've been deploying it uh, in Azure Stack HCI. So in part one, we're going to talk about the benefits of uh, using AVD and Azure Stack HCI, as well as supporting deployment configurations. And then we'll finish off with a little demo. And that'll be the final demo of this series. As I said, we've got the two-part um, podcast interview coming up. Uh, so when we talk about benefits, it's going to give you improved performance for Azure Virtual Desktop users in areas of, for poor connectivity to the Azure Public Cloud by, by giving them session hosts closer to their location. So it will also allow to, you to meet data locality or data sovereignty requirements by keeping app and user data uh, on-premises. It's going to improve access to legacy on-premises apps as well and, and data sources by keeping desktops and apps in the same location. Uh, and also, it's going to reduce cost and improve user experience uh, with Windows 10 and Windows 11 Enterprise multi-session, which allows multiple concurrent interactive sessions. So if you think about all the benefits you get from having an on-premises VDI solution historically, it's going to give you all, all, all that really, but it's it's Azure technology, using AVD technology, but on-premises. So this has been something that, I, since, since it's got made GA, so this has only been recently made uh, GA, um, I've had so many conversations about it, it's ridiculous. So it's a very, very uh, important step, I think, for Azure Stack HCI. And I feel like it's going to it's gonna grow this particular service for Microsoft massively, just because it's now, as well as, it's always had that uh, sort of server VDI capability. Well, now it's got that end user capability, so it's just going to, I think it's going to skyrocket personally. So some other benefits as well, um, it's, it's, it's going to simplify your VDI deployment and, and management compared to your traditional on-premises VDI solutions because uh, it allows you to use the Azure portal. Also, you can achieve the best performance by using RDP short path for low latency user access. So again, it's all those cool AVD features that you get in the cloud, but it's going to happen, you're going to get them locally within your DC, your data center or your on-premises location. Finally, it's going to allow you to deploy the latest fully patched images quickly and easily from the Azure Marketplace uh, images. So again, all the, all the cool AVD cloud features that you get. We'll talk a little bit about supporting deployment configurations before we jump into the demo. Um, so your Azure Stack HCI cluster does need to be running a minimum of version of 23H2 and it needs to be registered with Azure. So we've done all this in the demo, so you'll, you'll know that already. Once your cluster is ready, you can use um, any of the, the operating systems that you see there. So that includes Windows 11 Enterprise and Enterprise Multi-Session, Windows 10 Enterprise and uh, Enterprise Multi-Session, as well as Windows Server 22 and 2019 for the AVD deployment. Um, to use a session host on Azure Stack HCI with AVD, you also need to have the correct license in place. So uh, you need to make sure the license and act. You need to make sure you license and activate the virtual machines for activating Windows 10 and Windows 11 Enterprise Multi-Session and Windows Server 22 Data Center. Uh, Azure Edition uses the Azure verification for VMs and uh, for all other OS images such as Windows 10 and Windows 11 Enterprise and other editions of Windows Server, you should continue to use the existing activation methods that you're currently using. Finally, you need to install the Azure Connected Machine Agents on the virtual machines so they can communicate with the Azure Instance Metadata Service, uh, which, is which is a required endpoint for AVD. The Azure Connected Machine Agent is automatically installed when you add session hosts you're using the Azure portal as part of the process to deploy uh, as you, you know, deploy AVD or add session hosts to your host pool. So we are going to jump into the demo now. And uh, as I mentioned, this is this is the final demo 
for for this series. The next two episodes are going to have a, 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 going to have two parts of my podcast with my special guest. Uh, so let's jump into the demo portal. Welcome back, everybody. We are here back in the Nerdio portal now. So we're continuing with our sort of uh, Azure Stack ACI integration with Nerdio. Um, so the last last couple of episodes, if you remember the last sort of subtopic we were talking about, um, we actually did the demos to integrate uh, AVD with Nerdio, like kind of adding the Active Directory domain, adding the hybrid network, etc., and the resource group. And then the demo after that, we actually created our, our desktop image, or we actually set the desktop image and set that custom location that you need to do in the HCI box. So in today's episode, we're actually going to um, deploy or go through the steps you need to deploy um, into your workspace. Um, so um, again, you can you can add. Um, let's just add a, a let's call it um, HCI dash. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, let's call it that. Okay, uh, and then we'll put it in that resource group as well. Uh, let's go with East US. Let's grab some servers going. Let's click OK. Okay, so now that workspace is in place. Um, you want to go to a little drop down here and we need to do a hybrid host pool because remember this is a stack HCI we're not doing static or dynamic we're doing a hybrid one okay and this is where we can add a hit add a HCI host pool there on the right hand side so this is where we can go um, just stack HCI dash AVD uh, dash VM and then we'll let it, let it do the prefix uh, oh no this is the host pool sorry AVD HP, okay, we'll call it all at the end. Um, so again, we can do the same as we can normally with ABD and Nerdio, we can either go static or dynamic, um, and then we can go multi-user or we can have a remote app or desktop or personal. We're gonna stick with multi-user pool desktop. Directory, I'd obviously wanna, again, you can, it'll tell you, if you drop down, it'll, it'll show you which ones are eligible. Obviously they're grayed out, so you can't do those, so we have to do the jumpstart domain, because that is our hybrid domain. Again, if you've got FS Logic set up, which I didn't for, for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to turn it off, but you can obviously do that. Initial host count, leave that at one, and this is where I want to do the name. So zero stack HCI dash AVD dash VM, and then we'll let the, um, we'll do the prefix that it puts, uh, okay, then we'll do the prefix. So it'll be a, 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 a zero stack HCI dash AVD, and then it'll do the zero one at the end uh, itself. Um, desktop image. So this is where we can select um, which images we want to use. Um, and again, again, it shows the hybrid ones if you notice. So again, we're going to go with the Win 10 one there. Um, so how many vCPUs we want? I'm going to go for four. How much RAM do we want? I'm going to go for 16. Uh, leave it at static RAM type. Resource group, again, you can select where you want to put it. I'm going to put it in my RG, my HCI RG. And then this is where you can assign, a uh, quick assign as well if you want. Um, so yeah, again, similar to how you would do a normal Nerdio uh, st st uh, deployment for his uh, host pool, but in, in our case, we're just doing um, the the we're just doing the uh, HCI add HCI hybrid one, and so that's where you click OK, and it'll then create that um, that host pool. Uh, oh, uh, in valid active directory profiles, local AD, local AD, only local AD. Okay, that's what I've selected. Uh, I'm not sure why it's doing that. I've turned profiles off. Let's see if it's that then. Invalid attribute profiles, only local AD allowed. Yeah, but I've done local AD. It is a local AD. Um, I'm not doing profiles either, which is a bit strange. Okay, so this is this is my point, Matt. I'm getting very strange errors. Um, I'll have to look into what that's causing that, but essentially that'll deploy our host pool. Um, so once our host pool is deployed, we can then deploy virtual machines. So um, again, just wanted to show the steps of, of doing the HCI deployment uh, within Nerdio. So that'd be our host pool deployment. And from there, we can sort of um, do other management tasks as well. So um, we've got a couple more episodes left in this series. So it's, it's been a very fun one. It's been a short one than I normally do. It's been a fun uh, series either way. Um, so again, looking forward to finishing this off and moving on to the next one. Um, so hopefully everybody has enjoyed it. Um, again, if you're not subscribed, why not? You know, I'm, I'm doing, doing, we've got lots of content already. I've got over close to 250 videos. We've been in almost 300 videos. Loads of great Microsoft and Azure content. So please do check that out as well. Uh, and thank you for your ongoing support. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, goodbye.